Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. There are now 162 confirmed cases of coronavirus across 18 states. I'm Inez de la Quintero, and I'll have all the details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, nice cool start to your Friday morning. Mike Osterhage has your forecast. That was the magic word. Friday. Good morning. It is Friday, March 6th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. Feels nice out there today. Yeah, I mean, this is seasonable. Yeah. Temperature should be upper 40s. We're at 50 right now. We actually went up a degree. So, you know, it's light jacket weather. Mm -hmm. the Absolutely. This afternoon. Uh, yesterday, there was a lot of sunshine, but a lot Beautiful. of those high clouds. And that's what we're going to be seeing. This you know what? This morning on the way to work, uh -huh. the moon was really bright. People yeah. miss that. That's exactly what I was going to say. o'clock in the morning. And in this <laughs> picture, it was. I was exactly what I was going to say. It was almost creepy though, because there were those wispy yeah. clouds over it. And in this, there you can see it right there. As the moon is just about to set, it is almost full. Full moon. Full moon is actually. On the 9th, so what is that? Monday, and uh, it's it's beautiful out there though, and then it's going to be rising just about the time when the sun goes down later on this evening. And again, a lot of those high clouds out there. Temperatures are close to seasonable normal, so grab a light jacket, and then you won't need it by later on this afternoon. There's a little bit of a breeze in places. Mostly, we just have uh, no wind to speak of, so there may be a, a bit up around Austin, about 12 mile per hour winds, but wind is not going to be a huge factor today. Just a lot of clouds. Molds on the high side. Uh, that may be dropping down a little bit. So we do have some oak out there. A lot of those oak leaves starting to see anybody else starting to see a little dust in the round and everything. That good old yellow dust. I think we'll drop down a few more degrees this morning. Partly cloudy skies, uh, meaning a lot of high clouds out there. And we keep a lot of high clouds throughout the day. 70 for a high temperature. Basically, right at the just about normal winds out of the northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Temperature is going to be pretty consistent over the weekend. Uh, not quite as cool by Sunday morning, but then we'll really start to see the moisture increase and maybe some rain to start off next week. We'll talk about that and a warm up next week. Time saver traffic right now this Friday morning. Here's Officer Nick Solis. Good morning, sir. Anything going on yet? Hey, good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great morning. Yeah, we actually have one major accident. It's going to be westbound. Uh, I 10 before Roland Avenue, and that's I 10 East. Now, this accident just came out about 17 minutes ago, and it's a very serious accident. It looks like SAPD might be here for just a little while, so just keep that in mind if you're heading that way. Here it is, right here. Now, some reports got it was on the off ramp to Roland, some reports were right before Roland, so I'll get you more information on that precise location, but nonetheless, it's in that area. Just uh, use caution and be careful when you're heading this way. All right, Dave Leslie, back to you. Thank you very much, Nick. New this morning, San Antonio investigators are one step closer to solving a 20-year-old murder case. Police say 41-year-old Francisco Rangel is under arrest and charged with a murder that happened back in 1996. Records show that Rangel is accused of stabbing Joseph Johnson to death on West Mistletoe Avenue. During the investigation, investigators realized there were possible witnesses and suspects who had not yet been interviewed. After contacting two witnesses connected to the case, they were able to identify Ron Hell in a lineup provided by police. Ron Hell was arrested and charged with the crime. We continue to follow the latest developments involving COVID-19. The state of Texas can now test for the virus, even providing quicker results than the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Governor Greg Abbott announced health labs in 10 cities across the state, including San Antonio, can test for the virus, but it won't be for at least another two or three weeks. Across the 10 health labs, more than 125 tests a day will be able to be processed. So far, Texas has two confirmed COVID-19 cases and three presumptive positive cases. The latest confirmed cases being in Harris County. 11 people remain here at the Texas Center for Infectious Disease under federal quarantine. Meanwhile, the coronavirus cases across the United States have grown rapidly the past few days, jumping to at least 183 people confirmed. ABC's Inez de la Quatera explains how the Trump administration is responding and what passengers on a cruise ship off the California coast can expect later today. As the coronavirus continues to spread around the country, the Coast Guard dropping off testing kits to the Grand Prince's cruise ship to test passengers and crew potentially infected with the new virus. After a man died from being exposed during a cruise on the same ship last month, some passengers showing symptoms, the ship being held off the coast of San Francisco. If we've been exposed, we've been exposed and there's not much we can do about it. In New York, Mayor Bill de Blasio telling residents who have recently traveled to China, South Korea, Italy, Iran, and Japan to self-quarantine. 
The city's Department of Health is monitoring close to 3,000 New Yorkers for home isolation. In Washington State, Seattle area district schools closing for 22,000 students in an effort to slow the outbreak. Federal investigators now asking questions at the nursing home where nearly a dozen people died from the virus. Residents' families speaking out. Somebody needs to come and take control of this site. Vice President Pence touching down in that state, giving Washington's governor an elbow bump and pledging the federal government's full support, but admitting... We don't have enough tests today uh, to meet uh, what we anticipate will be the demand going forward. President Trump defending his administration's response during a Fox News town hall and with the Dow plunging over 900 points, admitting the virus could have an impact on the economy. It certainly might have an impact. At the same time, I have to say, people are now staying in the United States, spending their money in the U.S., and I like that. Congress has now approved more than $8 billion to fight the outbreak. The president is expected to sign that bill later today. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. And your morning headlines. Two people are behind bars this morning after they led California police on a wild chase through Palmdale. Take a look at this. Officers say two people in a stolen vehicle led deputies on a chase with the hood blocking the windshield and two tires blown out by spike strips. In the end, the car was sending off sparks, so the driver jumped out, tried to dodge speeding traffic on the freeway. He was clipped by an oncoming car, and then deputies were able to swarm in and take him into custody. The passenger with serious injuries due to an earlier gunfire exchange with deputies was also arrested. Facebook dropping some of President Trump's ads this week after Nancy Pelosi cites census confusion. The decision to take ads for Trump's re-election campaign down are because it directs people to a survey which the House Speaker says would confuse the survey with the once-a-decade headcount. A letter sent on Thursday to the Republican National Committee demanded a stop to any mailings or online ads that resemble Census Bureau documents aimed at confusing people or misinforming. Well, the head of J.P. Morgan is recovering this morning after having an emergency heart surgery. According to a letter from CO, from the company CEO, 63-year-old Jamie D Dimon, he had a tear in the inner lining of the aorta blood vessel. Officials say everything went well yesterday, that he's awake and alert. This is his first health threat in 2014. He was treated for throat cancer. It's not his first. In the meantime, Gordon Smith and Daniel Pinto will lead the company during his absence. Tim Duggan off to a pretty good start as a head coach after helping the Spurs beat the Charlotte Hornets this week and the future Hall of Famer's first chance to be the acting head coach for an entire game. Black and Silver bounced back from a 17-point deficit to win that one. In that game, there were seven Spurs in double figures, including DeJounte Murray, who had 11.7 assists and two big steals. The game finished with a close 104-103 victory for the Spurs. They have had a couple of days off, and tonight they are in Brooklyn to take on the Brooklyn Nets. Tip-off for that one is at 6.30. Can they get two in a row on the road? I have faith. Go, boys. You got it. I think they have it. It's 438 now and 50 degrees outside. Working from home as COVID-19 cases rise. Still ahead, how you can stay protected from the virus in your commute. Two new series are coming out on Netflix. Up next, a look at the new take on a sweet classic. It's dead. Oh. Live, live, live cam. Live cam. Hello. Live cam. Yeah. Our bad. Live cam. It's early. <laughs> it's Friday. It's early. Well, welcome back. It is 441. Netflix getting a sweet tooth. They have announced two animated series based on the 1964 novel Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It's coming out. Yeah, the first is a series, and it's based on the world and characters in the book. And then the second is focused on the Oompa Loompas featured in the novel. The small humans work in the Willy Wonka factory. They like to play practical jokes on people. The story company says that they are overjoyed that they're heading, that his name, I think it's Teika Watiti, I think, is heading the project. I don't know, I just like the Oompa Loompas. I think they should be featured. Oompa Loompa Oompa Dee Dee. It's time to check and see. Okay, 442 now and 50 degrees outside. <laughs>
Good effort. They're calling <laughs> nearly a million dressers from Ikea. Why you might want to take back this piece of children's furniture pretty quick. Coming up. And avoiding the coronavirus the next time you're on a plane. Up next, the facts and preventatives you should know about when traveling for work or leisure. Welcome back, everybody. It is now 445. Companies around the world are telling their employees to work from home amid the coronavirus. ABC's Gio Benitez shows us how to protect yourself from the virus on your commute. In this morning's GMA First Look, protecting yourself on a plane. If you use wipes, make sure to read the label to see how long it takes to kill bacteria. That can range from 30 seconds to a few minutes. So we've got our wipes. This is the most important thing, getting this tray table. In one study sponsored by the FAA, researchers found that the bottom of the tray table had less bacteria than the top, but armrests had even more germs than tray tables. And don't forget that air vent. But if you're healthy, experts say don't even open it. Air on a plane is refreshed every few minutes. That's more often than the air in an average office building. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have full live coverage from coast to coast on the coronavirus. Plus, Dr. Jen Ashton answers your questions live. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. If you've purchased from Ikea lately, you might want to listen up to this. There is a big recall for a dresser that may be in your child's bedroom. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz shows us why even though the dresser isn't very tall, there is a big problem. Furniture tip-overs. They happen more often than you might think. Dresser tip-overs alone have resulted in 212 deaths since 2000, mostly young children who tend to climb or stand on open drawers. Now, IKEA is recalling 970,000 Cullen three-drawer chests, calling them unstable if not anchored to the wall. Six incidents have been reported, none serious, though IKEA says the hazard may result in death or serious injuries to children. It is also the first to fail new voluntary industry standards. The Cullen chest is only about 28 inches tall, but last year, Consumer Reports tests of short dressers got results that might surprise you. We found that just because a dresser is low and seems stable, like one that's three drawers high, it can still pose a deadly tip-over risk to small children in your home. Government figures show at least five deaths linked to dressers just 30 inches tall or less. This is what what safety advocates recommend. It's a tether or anchor kit. You secure the furniture to the wall to keep it from tipping over. It's a simple and inexpensive solution. If you have the three drawer Cullen dresser, the CPSC says anchor it or move it to where children can't get to it and contact IKEA for either a free anchor kit or a full refund. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. It's Friday. It's very calm outside. There's no weather outside. There was quite a bit of construction, though, that I saw on my oh. way in. Yeah, construction, definitely 1604 and 35. We have some construction there, but we're still working on this accident here. It's I-10 westbound at Roland Avenue. Uh, we've been on scene now for about 30 minutes. Uh, hopefully everything's OK there. Looks like it's going to be shut down for just a little while. So just keep that in mind if you're heading that way. Now, uh, another thing is I think an accident just came out on Southwest Military and Pleasanton, so I'll get you more information on that. All right, let's take a look at the trends guide here. Let's uh, other places in the city. All right, we got 35 in Judson looking very smooth right now. Uh, 35 in uh, 1604 military, I'm sorry, and there's that 10 in Roland accident again. And uh, let's do one more 10 at the Y looking like a ghost town. You know, she mentioned construction for those people who spend their entire evenings at home. And don't get up till six or seven o'clock. I can assure you, there's construction going on on Highway 281 because yeah. I get stuck in it. Every yeah, time. that two yeah. lanes closed on 35 uh, yeah. southbound this yeah. morning. So. Yes, mm -hmm. there was one lane open at a parson, so they're working. They are working, mm -hmm. and we appreciate them working at those times because then that most people do get to avoid mm -hmm. it. So. How's it going over there, Mr. Osterhage? Good. You know, I was just thinking about how to kind of sum up 
what it's looking like for next week with spring break for most everybody. And yes, it will warm up toward the middle of the week, but it's not going to be anything just outrageously hot. Mm -hmm. We are going to have a lot of high clouds around, so maybe not the prettiest, but don't forget sun cream, by the way, even if you got high clouds. Uh, yep. So it's not just going to be, you know, miserably hot or anything like that. There's a little bit of a chance for uh, a couple of showers Monday, and that's about it as of right now. All right, we are talking about the high clouds out there, and there's a lot of moisture aloft in the atmosphere, and a lot of folks have been sending in these pictures. There's a beautiful view of the moon and there's that nice ring around the moon and that's because even though it looked like skies were and may have been to the uh, just looks wise pretty clear a lot of moisture aloft in the atmosphere and that's in the form of little tiny ice crystals way way up there and those act like little prisms so kind of like when you get a rainbow which is caused by the rain drops when it rains and there's sun out there in this case it's those little tiny ice crystals that form prisms and that forms almost like a, a rainbow around the moon. I've heard them called moon dogs, sun dogs. It happens with sunshine sometime as well. So thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. It's always kind of cool to see those. We do have a lot of, uh, well, like I said, some high clouds, although it's not completely filled in. A few stars are showing up. Should be a, a decent sunrise this morning. Temperatures are very close to normal. I think we will continue to drop down a couple of degrees. Uh, we don't really have much of a wind chill to deal with. Maybe a you know, hint of a breeze out there this morning out of the north at about five, maybe 10 miles per hour. So not too bad. Grab a jacket. And then you won't need it by this afternoon, kind of like yesterday. Here's all that high level moisture, which is sliding on in here. Of course, a couple of days ago, it was nothing but just the darker shade of gray. And so that means really dry air upstairs. But that's why we're seeing some of those high clouds like we had yesterday. Maybe some of those rings around the, the moon and or the sun later on today. And also, if you, some of those high clouds are showing up in the uh, satellite picture, we're going to continue to keep this moisture flowing in here upstairs in the atmosphere. So we're going to have a lot of high clouds around not only today, but also over the weekend down here at the surface is still very, very dry. So dew points, we actually get kind of a reinforcing shot of some drier air later on today, and that's also going to help to keep temperatures maybe down a little bit. Made it the mid 70s yesterday will be about 70 today and good looking day tomorrow. Um, some clouds around there mist. I really doubt it because the air is so dry. There's a couple of computer models that are trying to scare up a little bit of mist tomorrow morning, but I don't really think so just because it's so dry here at the surface. But the humidity will definitely start to come back into the picture. Once we get into Sunday, I think there may be a little bit, uh, perhaps some mist early on Sunday, maybe a shower late little bit better chance of a shower on Monday, though, and that'll be about it. 65 degrees today, mostly sunny skies, a lot of those high clouds out there today, and then a high temperature up to 70, so just very pleasant. I mean, that's the best way to put it today, and then if you're going out tonight, it's going to cool off fairly quickly. Um, tomorrow down to 45 again, up to 68. So we do stay close to normal again, about the same thing on Sunday, although not quite as cool in the morning. And then the moisture really comes on in here. So we stay at 60 starting off on Monday morning. And again, a couple of showers are possible on Monday. Otherwise, those are pretty much high clouds through the middle of the week and highs get up close to 80 by Wednesday and Thursday. A weekend that looks pretty nice. Yeah, and set your clocks ahead before you go to bed. Nope. 452 and 50 degrees. A new film expected to bring in half a million dollars. Up half a million? That's it. Up next, a family friendly family friendly feature. You can catch this weekend. Maybe half Times change. Some magical animated elves expected to top the box office this weekend. Onward, the latest film from Disney Pixar tracking to open in the 40 to $50 million range. That would easily be enough for first place, but on the low side of opening weekends for Pixar. They don't know what it is to fight. Also opening, Ben Affleck's basketball drama The Way Back, looking at five to 10 million. And the Jane Austen adaptation Emma, expanding nationwide after two weekends in limited release. Onward is the story of two brothers who get a magical chance to spend one last day with their dad, who died when they were young. At the premiere, writer-director Dan Scanlon told me it's a story that's very personal for him. Like the characters in the movie, my dad passed away when uh, my brother and I were young. We don't remember him, and we had a lot of questions, obviously, about who he was and how we were like him, and that was the seed of this film. Um, and then we set it in a crazy fantasy world. <laughs> the brothers in the movie are voiced by Chris Pratt and Spider-Man star Tom Holland. No stopping Ricky Martin. And Enrique Iglesias, the two just announced they're teaming up for a tour of North America later this year. When asked if they're worried about the coronavirus, the performers say they have a strategy. We're going we're gonna to wash our hands a lot. A lot. A lot. 
I, I mean, it should be. Well, we're concerned, but we're not going to stop our lives. Tickets go on sale next week. The tour kicks off September 5th in Phoenix. Yep. And it's a Friday birthday for Connie Britton, the Emmy-nominated Friday Night Light star is 53 today, while Oscar-nominated director Rob Reiner is 73. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens in ABC News, Los Angeles. Have not heard living La Vida Loca in a long time. No, but boy, now it's going to be stuck in my head all day. That earworm is there. I got the Oompa Loompa song stuck in my head that you sang earlier. Oompa Loompa. 457 to 50 degrees. Oompa dee doo. Ahead in our next half hour, police are releasing more about a woman who was killed in an area subway where she worked. And more on a new concept smartphone that folds twice to fit a 10 inch screen into your pocket. That's coming up in Tech Bite. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, police make an arrest in a San Antonio murder case that's been open since 1996. A woman found guilty of intoxication manslaughter and intoxication assault could finally learn her punishment later today. And live look outside with live cam. Going to be an outstanding day. A little chilly this morning, but things are going to be looking good throughout the weekend. What does spring break have in store? Oh, my Costa Hage has that coming up in just a second. Good morning. It is Friday. 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 Means we get to sleep in a little bit tomorrow. A Thanks. little? Yeah. And you were yeah. off on Monday, so you get a long weekend. I get three days to sleep in. Good for you. I Mike's see. here, and he's got your forecast for this Friday. Yep. Friday looks pretty good. Uh, yeah, it's cool out there. It's not cold. The light jacket's a pretty good idea. And like was the situation yesterday. And then you can, uh, you know, by noon or early afternoon, really kind of forget about it because temperatures are going to be up close to normal. And that's the, the thing. Uh, yesterday, well, we did make it up to 75 yesterday, but uh, basically normal temperatures today, tomorrow, and even on Sunday, a little bit warmer in the, uh, the morning hours. Right now, we are at 50 here in town, some 40s in parts of the hill country. Uh, the humidity is still relatively low, 2.4 and a light breeze out there, so maybe a hint of a, a wind chill. But I mean, you just look around the area and wind chill temperatures aren't that much below where it actually is. You know, maybe knock off a degree or two from the actual air temperatures, but nothing uh, extreme out there right now. We do have a lot of high clouds. We're going to keep a lot of high clouds around throughout the rest of today. Speaking of high mold, it's on the high side. That's yesterday's count. And oak. I'm waiting for that one to go up because there's a whole bunch of live oak leaves all around the area. And I don't know about you, but I've been seeing a lot of that dust on my car recently. And as far as the rest of today, like I said, a lot of high clouds uh, with that sunshine mixed in. Sort of what it looked like yesterday. 70 for high temperature, which uh, we've got a little bit of a not really a, well, like a front moving on through here. So that's going to hold temperatures close to normal, unlike the 75s I mentioned from yesterday. And then over the weekend, a lot of high clouds sticking around. They will start to kind of thicken up a little bit more. Near average temperatures, near normal temperatures, upper 40s, upper 60s, close to 70. And then next week, a shower to start things off. A few of them on Monday, and we will definitely be heating up. But it's not going to be like outrageously hot at all. Uh, just getting up to about 80 by the middle part of the week. Details on the weekend coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. I know we had an accident last half hour. Is that still going on? Yeah, definitely going on. This accident Mike's talking about is going to be eastbound, westbound I-10 just before Roland Avenue. We've been on scene. SAPD has been on scene for about an hour now. Looks like uh, they're still there. Uh, hopefully they can get that cleared up at least before 6 a.m. Uh, so it doesn't affect rush hour traffic. But yeah, still working on this accident here. All right, let's take a look at some drive times. 35 southbound from the northeast side of 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes. And if you're on 35 northbound from the southwest side of 1604 to downtown, 13 minutes, good times there. All right, taking a look outside of the trans guy, 35 and 37, good. 10 at Roland, there's that accident there. Hopefully they get that cleared up anytime. 10 at the Y, still looks like a ghost town out there. Couple of cars, huh? And uh, 35 in Brooklyn, traffic starting to pick up just a little bit. Well, I hope you all have a great start to your morning. Dave Leslie, back to you. Thank you, sir. San Antonio murder case has gone unresolved for more than two decades. Could be one step closer to being closed. Police say 41-year-old Francisco Rangel now under arrest and charged with the murder that happened back in 1996. Police records show that Rangel accused of stabbing Joseph Johnson to death on West Mistletoe Avenue. During the investigation, investigators realized there were possible witnesses and suspects who had not yet been interviewed. After contacting two witnesses connected to the case, both were able to identify Ron Hell in a lineup provided by police. Ron Hell was then arrested and charged with the crime. 
Authorities have released a photo of a woman who was shot and killed at an area subway, subway rather, where she worked. 43-year-old Maricela Cadena was shot multiple times last Friday. This happened in the 11,000 block of Southeast Loop 410. The body of the man accused of shooting her was found Tuesday in a wooded area near Southeast Loop 410 and Roosevelt Avenue. Police say 42-year-old Andrew Munoz was also accused of kidnapping Cadena two days before the shooting. SAPD says Cadena was a victim of domestic violence. Later today, a woman who was drunk behind the wheel and responsible for a deadly crash could finally learn her sentence. Last night, after deliberating for over four hours, the jury was not able to reach a verdict in the punishment phase of the trial of Rosalinda Olalde. She was found guilty this week of intoxication manslaughter and intoxication assault for a crash back in 2018. Mario Velasquez Palu was killed in that crash. Along with witnesses from prosecutors, the defense called an adult probation expert to discuss specific conditions of probation. Testing for the coronavirus now available in some parts of the state. Governor Greg Abbott says labs here in San Antonio, as well as Tyler, Corpus Christi, and Harlingen will be operational by the end of the month. At the same time, test kits are running short in other parts of the United States. As CNN's Melissa Rainey reports, a cruise ship that carried a man who later died from the coronavirus is trying to return to port with thousands of passengers. We don't have enough tests today uh, to meet uh, what we anticipate will be the demand going forward. Even though more than a million coronavirus tests have been sent out to American hospitals, Vice President Pence says the United States is struggling to keep up with the demand. It's underlying why this crisis could get a lot worse because we can't even get our arms around what's happening if we don't have testing capacity. For those who we believe have been exposed, uh, for those who are showing symptoms, we've, we've been able to provide of the testing. Um, we're, we're focused very much on a cruise uh, ship just off the California coast. From the air, test kits have now been dropped to the Grand Prince's cruise ship, which will sit off the coast of San Francisco until tested passengers are cleared. After it was found, a man who later died from coronavirus had been on that ship. The majority of people on board are like over 70. So there's a lot of concern there. In the past month, 241 people were refused entry to the U.S. by the Department of Homeland Security. 14 at airports, 227 at land ports. Public health right now is overwhelmed. In Washington state, an eruption of infections and deaths prompted a visit from Vice President Pence. The state is now waiving testing costs for people who don't have insurance. For so long as it takes, uh, we're going to be with you every step of the way. I'm Melissa Rainey reporting. Well, President Trump is heading to Atlanta today to tour the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Vice President Mike Pence has told people that President Trump plans to sign the coronavirus emergency funding bill passed by the House and Senate this week during his CDC visit. It provides more than $8 billion for vaccines, treatments, coronavirus preparations, and small business loans. An Alabama inmate has been executed after the U.S. Supreme Court denied a stay and temporarily put in place. Nathaniel Woods was executed by lethal injection. The 43-year-old was convicted of killing three Birmingham police officers in 2005. Woods' attorneys argued he was innocent and pointed to another defendant who confessed to being the lone gunman. The Supreme Court issued a temporary stay, but minutes before he was to be executed, it later denied that stay, and Alabama's governor refused to step in to stop the execution. Stock markets around the world are following the U.S. market's downturn as traders fear a world economic slowdown caused by the spread of the coronavirus. Japan's Nikkei index was down over 2 percent, while markets in Australia were down more than 1.5. The S&P yesterday dropped over 3 percent and is down more than 10 percent from its high less than a month ago. It's 508. It's 50 degrees. The competition to create the best folding smartphone continues. Now, one company has a phone that can fold twice. And coming up next, if you're driving a Toyota or a Lexus, more important recall information you need to know about. And live cam giving us a look outside. We're in for a nice couple of days. It's a little bit chilly this morning. You do need a jacket, but we're going to have a lot of sunshine later. Welcome back. It's 12 minutes after 5. In your morning consumer headlines, Toyota has expanded its recall of vehicles by more than a million due to full fuel pump issues. In January, Toyota recalled about 700,000 vehicles. The company said the total now stands at 1.8 million. The vehicles include some popular late-year models like the Highlander, Tacoma, Camry, and Corolla. 
Many versions of Toyota's high-end Lexus brand have also been recalled. The company said a faulty fuel pump can make your car stall out and cause you to crash. If you drive one of the vehicles, the company will notify you by early May. Toyota and Lexus dealers will replace the fuel pump at no cost to you. Long-term U.S. mortgage rates have sunk to a record low, and that's giving many homeowners an opportunity to refinance their loans. The average rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage hit a record low of 3.29% this week. That's down from 3.45% last week. The new rate, the lowest for a 30-year fixed mortgage since Freddie Mac started tracking such rates back in 1971. The decline being driven by investors shifting money out of the stock market and into the safety of U.S. Treasuries and the coronavirus outbreak has deepened. Well, get ready to dunk or twist oh. today because it is National Oreo Cookie Day, everybody. The Oreo was invented by food scientist Sam J. Porcello. It's now Nabisco. In 1912, more than 450 billion Oreos have now been sold around the world, and it's said to be the most popular cookie in the United States. It is hard to dunk and twist. No, you do one or the other. You either undo it and you lick the middle or you're the dunker. So you know what you do. You dunk one, eat that one, then you twist one, eat that one, then you just kind of alternate. I think that works. The whole package works. of Oreos. I think the whole package might be a little much, David. For you, maybe. Yeah, for you too. It's 514 now and it's 50 degrees outside. Yeah. Still ahead of a behind the scenes look at Tom Hanks' news World War II action drama focusing on a U.S. destroyer fighting Nazi U-boats. And next, some companies are changing the way they hire workers thanks to fears of the coronavirus. These are real people, not actors, who've got their eczema under control. With less eczema, you can show more skin. So roll up those sleeves and help heal your skin from within with Dupixent. Dupixent is the first treatment of its kind that continuously treats moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis, even between flare-ups. Dupixent is a biologic and not a cream or steroid. Many people taking Dupixent saw clear or almost clear skin and had significantly less itch. That's a difference you can feel. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixin. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. So help heal your skin from within and talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixin. Welcome back. It is 517. Some companies are making changes to job interviews amid the coronavirus emergency. ABC's Trevor Alt and Zareen Shaw have the details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, companies putting off face-to-face -face interviews because of coronavirus. LinkedIn is the latest. Job candidates are being given the option to interview virtually. Google and other big tech firms are also changing interview procedures to reduce the possibility of spreading the virus. And one company is taking foldable phones a step further. China's TCL has unveiled a concept device that folds twice to create three separate panels. The double-fold technology allows users to fit a 10-inch screen into their pockets. Finally, it's time to put that phone down. The National Day of Unplugging begins today at sundown, lasting 24 hours. The idea is to unplug phones, tablets, and laptops for a full 24 hours and instead use that time to make connections with family and friends. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. That's going to be impossible for some people. It's Absolutely. impossible for me. Yeah. You're one of those some people. I am. All right, let's check it on your traffic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we're still working on that one accident. It's going to be westbound I-810 East at Roland or just before Roland. Starting to get a little traffic build up here. So just keep that in mind. I, I hope this accident cleared up here before 6 o'clock, 630. So it is an effect, uh, you know, morning commute. But right now it's still active there. All right, let's do some drive times, huh? 1604 westbound from US 281 to I-10. We got seven minutes and uh, 281 southbound from Boulevardi to 1604. Five minutes. Uh, good times there, huh? All right, let's take a look outside of the Trans Guide. 410 at Broadway, looking good. 410 at Perrin Bido, looking better. And what else do we have here? 410 at Cherry Ridge, uh, just west of there, looking smooth. And uh, 37 at Jones, southeast side, hardly a car on the road.
Would you get a pass on that unplugged thing if it was literally a necessity? Like, um, yeah, give me an example. Like, well, what's okay, a necessity? My, my son is leaving on a flight tomorrow, and all the flight information and things like that would be on the phone. Or oh, do you have to print? Do you gotta have to go print old it? school, or do you have to print it off before? Got to go old school. Clock starts. Old school, yeah. You just show. You got to print it off before the clock starts. Yeah. Or, or like I said, look in the newspaper. Give him a quarter and have him call you. Although there are no pay phones pay anymore. Phone. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have them anymore. Find a pay phone. <laughs> All right, uh, this is what today is going to look like. A lot like yesterday, a lot of those high clouds out there. It was a gorgeous day yesterday, and today's gonna be very, very pretty as well. Oh, it's beautiful, and this is obviously the uh, sunset, and right when the, you know, we're getting a couple of days away from the full moon, and so now just as the sun is going down is when, you know, you look to the west for the sunset, look to the east for the moon rise. It's gonna be beautiful with those high clouds out there. Not much is showing up, obviously, good visibility out there. 43 Balverde, 48 Helotus, 50 at the airport. I think we still may drop down a few more degrees in the next uh, couple of hours. Uh, dew points are in the 30s and low 40s, so relatively dry air out there. We do have a lot of moisture upstairs in the atmosphere, and that's going to be like yesterday with those high clouds. That's why we're going to have a lot of high clouds around today as well as over the weekend. And it'll probably start to thicken up just a little bit. And actually, those show up on the uh, satellite radar imagery. Here's all the moisture coming in from the Pacific Ocean across the Baja of California, Mexico. And this is going to be the high clouds that we keep around here for the next couple of days. As far as the moisture down here at the surface, we are going to get kind of a reinforcing shot of some drier air throughout the day, again, down here at the surface, still with those high clouds around here. What that means is just gonna stay very, very comfortable today. Now, what's interesting is some computer models are trying to scare up a little bit of some mist tomorrow morning. I really doubt that because we've got such dry air around here. Uh, and then we continue to keep dry air throughout most of the day tomorrow. Then the humidity will start to come back into the picture by Sunday, and that's going to increase throughout the day on Sunday. So kind of the clouds are going to be thickening up. We'll notice the humidity a little bit more as the day rolls on on Sunday. Here's what it looks like on the uh, computer model. Again, some high clouds out there today as well as uh, tomorrow, and we keep a lot of those high clouds around. And like I said, they will be thickening up as we go on throughout the day tomorrow, as well as going into Sunday. And then we have some disturbances moving on through here. There's a small chance to see us shower late Sunday. Kind of doubt it. Better chance on Monday, although not a fantastic chance for any rain on Monday. Uh, 65 degrees today at noon. Again, a lot of high clouds and northeasterly wind at about 10, 15 miles per hour. When we make it up to 70 later on today. Yesterday, we did make it up to 75, but again, we have a kind of a weak little front moving on through here, so that's going to hold temperatures somewhat in check later on today. Tomorrow, we start off about normal again, maybe a little bit below that, mid 40s and then get up to uh, 68 for a high temperature. You know, really pleasant. Jackets more in the morning and then uh, won't need them by the afternoon. Pretty much same thing on Sunday, maybe even a perhaps a little mist on Sunday morning. Uh, a lot of clouds throughout the day. A shower is possible late Sunday. The better chance of rain, albeit not great, is gonna be Monday and then temperatures will warm up close to 80 into the middle part of next week, but we will keep a lot of those high clouds around here. So overall, I think it's gonna be a, a good looking spring break week. Thank you very much, Mike. Mm -hmm. 522, 50 degrees. Up next, more on actor Tom Hanks' new World War II action drama, where he not only plays a critical part, but he also wrote the screenplay. Welcome back to 525. Tom Hanks doing double duty in his next movie, and we have your first look. Here's CNN's David Daniel with your Hollywood Minute. Air escort to Greyhound. You will now be out of range of air cover for the next five days. Safe travels to England. How many crossings does this make? This is my first. Tom Hanks is the nervous commander of a U.S. destroyer braving Nazi U-boats to get troops across the Atlantic in Greyhound. Hanks also wrote the screenplay for the World War II action drama, which opens June 12th. You got this, okay? No, don't just nod. I want to hear your voice. Yes or no? Yes, coach. For Brandon Wilson and Will Ropp to win their roles in The Way Back, they had to prove their acting chops and their hoop skills. So I was going to the gym, you know, brushing up on my skills. And there was another guy who kind of had a similar look to me, as me. And I kept fearing that he was also going to go to the scrimmage. And I was like, he's so much better than me. Everyone I would see at the basketball court that had a similar look, I was like, they're probably going for this role. <laughs> the guy didn't show up. 
No, none of right. those people were there, no. My job in the movie is to shoot three-pointers, and I took two in the scrimmage, and I airballed both. And I thought, yeah, that's it, I'll, I'll drive home. And then Gavin said I got the role, and I was like, you're crazy. <laughs> in Hollywood, I'm exactly. David Daniel. You need to work on that three-pointer then. Uh, I think <laughs> you so. Your time now is 527, 50 degrees outside. Hey, coming up in our next half hour, President Trump heads to Tennessee to check out the damage left behind by those deadly tornadoes. And more on the woman whose two children have been missing for months. She's making a court appearance later today. And in a new documentary, former President Bill Clinton is opening up about his affair with Monica Lewinsky. Good morning. It's 5.30. It is. And it's also Friday. <laughs> Welcome to your Friday, everybody. It is the 6th of March. And we've already had one accident. That's the only one I've been working on. It's... Uh... I-10 eastbound or westbound just before rolling, still active scene, still out there. So. Imagine traffic's going to be pretty heavy throughout the day. People trying to get out of town because spring, spring break, break for a lot of kiddos. Oh, it's not for everybody though, is it? I mean, or is it? Pretty that much. I'm not sure. I think I think it's it's like going back to school where the majority they, of folks have yeah. it. Some it's it's delayed. It's a little just bit a little scattered. Bit. Um, north but, side in in a, both the big. Uh, school SISD and yeah. Northside both are. Okay. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of schools are off next week. So uh, the weather's looking pretty good. Uh, today is going to be a lot like yesterday. We're starting off kind of coolish. Grab a jacket <laughs> before you head out the door. A lot of those high clouds out mm -hmm. there. And what are you doing? Bus sound effects? Yeah, you got You don't have any sound effects on there. He so said you needed a sound effect it. yesterday. What was that? <laughs> That's a good one. I like the break, it. The brakes. Okay. And then the door opening up. <laughs> yeah, the door opening there. So anyway, after school today, we're going to be right around the low 70s, mostly sunny skies. And a lot of those high clouds again, but still, you know, really nice day. And that's, I think, what we're going to have over the weekend. We much. need a nice weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, very pleasant, normal temperatures, basically. Should be a good looking sunrise this morning. And uh, we're still at 5043 up the road, Bernie Comfort and Bandera, 48 in Tarpley, 51 at Stinson. And mold is on the high side. Uh, oak and ash are low waiting for the oak count to go up because all those leaves are falling and all that dust is getting on out there. We're going to have more details on the weekend and look ahead to next week as temperatures will be warming up next week. How hot's going to get? Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. So you said just that one accident, Nick? Yeah, yeah, Mike, just the one accident we've been working on. And this accident's been active for about an hour and 20 minutes now, still out there um, on I-10 westbound just before Roland Avenue. Like I said, we're hoping it gets cleared up pretty soon so it doesn't affect your morning commute. But, hey, it is spring break. Maybe a lot of people took off today after Friday to get an early start, so maybe traffic won't be too heavy, but I can't guarantee that. All right, here's that accident, westbound I-10 at Roland. Um, it's been there for a little while. It's not causing traffic buildup yet on those westbound lanes. No yellow there, so that's good so far. All right, I got a drive time for you. If uh, you're eastbound 1604 from Halotis to Randolph Air Force Base, it's 27 minutes, and back from Randolph Air Force Base to Halotis, 29 minutes. So good times there. All right, Trans Guide, 37 at Jones on the southeast side, looking good. Traffic's not too bad there. 281 and 410. I like that shot of the city. It's really cool. Looks like a nice background. Looking good. And 281 at Grayson. Hardly any cars on the road. Well, I hope you're having a great start to your Friday morning. Dave Leslie, back to you. Thanks, Nick. Well, things have heated up in a cold case murder. San Antonio police have made an arrest in a stabbing death that happened more than 20 years ago. Our Katrina Weber's live near downtown with that story. So what was the big break for police, Katrina? Well, they say it came about after they put fresh eyes on the case and realized that there were some people who they had overlooked in the past. Well, this led to the arrest of Francisco Rangel, who turned 41 just the other day. He's been linked to the 1996 stabbing death. The victim, Joseph Johnson, was 18 years old at the time. Police found his body inside an abandoned house in the 700 block of West Mistletoe. The arrest affidavit says investigators recently realized there were some witnesses and potential suspects who they missed back then. It says they tracked them down recently, talked to two people who pointed to Ron Hell as the suspect. Investigators had to travel all the way to Florida to talk to one of those witnesses. Ron Hell was booked into jail yesterday and he faces a charge of murder. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A woman whose two children have been missing for months makes a court appearance later today. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, she and her husband fled from Idaho shortly after an investigation got underway. Welcome back, Lori. 
Where are your kids? Lori Vallow back in Idaho after waiving extradition from Hawaii. The 46-year-old faces numerous charges, including two felony counts of desertion and non-support of children. 17-year-old Tylee Ryan and 7-year-old Joshua J.J. Vallow were last seen in September. All of the authorities are concerned, and they have said since the beginning back in December that they believe Lori knows and she is deliberately misleading and not telling the truth. The FBI is asking anyone who was at Yellowstone Park on September 8th to turn in their videos and photos that may show J.J. and Ty Lee. Ty Lee wasn't seen after that day. J.J. was, so it just... It made me very sad. It's uh, a lot of emotions. According to court documents, Vallow asked people to lie to the authorities during the investigation into the disappearances. Bail is set at $5 million. She was asked to present the kids. She didn't do it. The prosecutors are going to say, if you were not uh, concerned about violating that court order, who is to say you're going to return when you're, when you're required to return to court? John Lawrence, KSAT 12 News. President Trump heads to Middle Tennessee today. He's going to be visiting areas devastated by those tornadoes earlier this week. 25 people were killed by the storms, many more hurt and property damage extensive. President Trump has already approved a disaster declaration, making federal funding available to those affected. Bill Clinton is opening up about his affair with Monica Lewinsky. In a new four-part documentary, the former president says he feels terrible. The affair defined the former White House intern's life. The documentary focuses on Hillary Clinton's life and career. An entire episode is dedicated to the Lewinsky scandal and the investigations that followed. The affair eventually led to his impeachment and subsequent, uh, subsequent acquittal from the Senate. Clinton is asked in the documentary why he entered the relationship. He said it was one of the many things he did to cope with the pressure, disappointments, and fears of life. A North Carolina woman celebrated her 100th birthday doing what she wanted, hanging out in a jail cell. Ruth Bryant says she's lived a century and has never been arrested. She wanted it off her bucket list, and the police helped her out with that. Deputy showed up at her assisted living center and handcuffed her. She even pretended to resist arrest. After it was That's all over, awesome. they gave her a round of hugs in a jailhouse portrait. She returned to her retirement community and celebrated with a party and a really good story. She even resisted arrest. <laughs> God bless <laughs> her little heart. That's awesomeness. Awesome. Look at putting the handcuffs on her. <laughs> that is the cutest thing ever. Sirens going. 100 year old lady. Lock her up. Because she wanted to. 537 at 50 degrees. Great stuff. Still ahead, business is booming at several grocery store chains across the country thanks to the coronavirus. We're going to tell you who's benefiting the most. And also coming up next, as we remember the fall of the Alamo today, one Texas lawmaker weighing in on the historic landmarks restoration process. And live cam giving us a look outside. Go freshen up that coffee and come on back for more Good Morning San Antonio. Welcome back. It's 20 minutes away from 6 o'clock. Today marks the 184th anniversary of the fall of the Alamo. This comes as the fight over the Alamo's redesign continues. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick is among those not happy with the current plans for the site, saying the project is badly off track. He also opposes the moving of the Cenotaph. District 1 Councilman Roberto Trevino says the city's historic and design review commission has already approved the move. Now, uh, it's, it's uh, uh, being reviewed by the Texas Historical Commission, and uh, those are the final steps in uh, what we hope to have uh, uh, begin here in just a matter of weeks. So we're, we're ready to go. We're ready to start the construction. The Texas Historical Commission will meet later this month to discuss authorizing the dismantling, restoration, and relocation of the Cenotaph. Sarah Cousin will be live for the Fall of the Animal Reenactment event coming up later on in our 6 o'clock hour. Your time now is exactly 541. Your temperature outside is 50 degrees. And coming up next, as active shooter drills become more common, some experts say they may be doing more harm than good for students. And welcome back. It is 543. Active shooter drills are common in schools now, but two national teacher unions say instead of preparing students, the surprise drills are creating a traumatic experience. Tiffany Huertas takes a look at how drills are impacting teachers and students here in San Antonio. 
need to stay as quietly as possible. Uh, it's almost like a game of hide and seek and we're gonna wait until our visitor comes into our classroom and uh, they open the door for us. And it's a drill that's intended to keep us safe. Imagine three-year-olds in pre-K in this situation. That's the drill David Garza has to go through with his class at Head Start at Dezavala Elementary School. The day of the drill, I'll go through a little reminder with my students and I'll let them know this is something that's gonna be coming up. San Antonio ISD says they conduct lockdown drills. Lockdown drills are different from active shooter drills, according to every town for gun safety. Students and staff remain confined to an area in lockdown drills, unlike active shooter drills, which are tailored to specifically address active shootings. But not every school district around the country gives advance notice and some worry about the impact that could have on the mental health of students and educators alike. That's why the American Federation of Teachers, the National Education Association, and every town for gun safety teamed up and made recommendations on active shooter drills and proactive school safety solutions. In their report, they mentioned ways experts have found that can help protect students' well-being. For example, drills should not include simulations that mimic an actual incident. Parents, teachers, and students should have advance notice of drills, and schools should create age and developmentally appropriate drill content with the help of school personnel. Here at home, president of the San Antonio Alliance of Teachers and Support Personnel, the union that represents SAISD teachers and employees, says they are talking to teachers at the district about lockdown drills and collecting information. Potter says they are also working with the district on other improvements. One of the major things we've been focusing on as a union this year with, our, with the district is the need for all of our classroom doors and all of the office doors in our, our school buildings and offices in the district, that, that those be able to be locked. Potter says drills can be traumatizing for students, especially the young ones. When we're talking about our younger kids, when we're talking about three-year-olds, four-year-olds, five-year-olds. When I was coming to school myself, I also didn't have to go through these kinds of drills, and it's just, it's just a reminder of the things that we have going on in our society right now. I wish there was more that could be done on the state level, uh, legislatively, but until then, these are the things that we're having to do to keep our students safe. I'm Tiffany Huertas. To see more stories like this, check out KSAT News at 9, Monday through Friday. Well, the coronavirus is scaring up business for some companies. Costco's one of them. The retailer is boasting strong sales growth in the last quarter. That's largely because consumers are stocking up on cleaning products, food, and household essentials. Kroger is also doing well recently due to the disease. The grocery chain CFO says their customers have been getting lots of items like water, hand sanitizer, and pre-made meals. HP once again rejecting a takeover bid from Xerox. This one valued at around $35 billion. The board at HP says the bid is undervalued, and there's also questions about the combined debt that the two companies bring to the table. Time to check on the roadways once again on your Friday. Nick. Yeah, Leslie, sorry, I was just checking on that accident. And looks like I ten, the, I, the accident I-10 at Eastbound and Roland has just cleared up. I don't see any more units out there, so that's always good news. So looks like this one may just be cleared up. It was starting to cause some traffic before that graphic saw. You saw the orange there, so hopefully it is cleared. It looks like it is. I'll, I just want to make sure. All right, Trans Guy, 10 at Roland. There it is. I don't see no more police vehicles. That's good. 10 at the Y. Traffic's starting to pick up there just a little bit. Um, let's see, 35 at Brooklyn. Definitely getting some light to moderate traffic in that area. And uh, 35 in Cesar Chavez downtown. Traffic's picking up, so Time to leave. <laughs> time to leave. <laughs> well, when he says it, it's time to leave. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to the man in the uniform, please. Thank yes. you. Hey, uh, weather's not an issue today. No, it's not. Uh, we've got you know cool temperatures out there, and we're going to have some uh, decent sunrises and sunsets, as is this picture. I like that with the uh, CPS Energy power plant and the sun setting in the background. I know. It's... <laughs> That's a very cool looking picture. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Once again, um, if you haven't posted a picture in a while, what you have to do is re-download or refresh the KSAT weather app. And then at the bottom of that, that's where you can post. There's one little one of those little spots at the bottom, and it says post your pictures there. And that's how you can post KSAT Connect pictures. So we've got, as you can see, a couple of stars that are showing up out there. So not a complete cloud cover, a lot of high cloudiness out there. But like I said, it's going to be a nice looking sunrise. Temperature is just a little bit above normal. We're at 50 right now, 43 bands.
Bandera, 51 Tarpley, and 48 in Floresville. We've got fairly dry air, dew points, measure moisture in the atmosphere are on the, the lower side. There's all this moisture aloft in the atmosphere, and that's why we had kind of that veiled sunshine yesterday. And that's going to be the situation again today, but still a really good looking day. Temperatures are going to be close to normal readings. Here's the, the radar and satellite imagery, and satellite does pick up some of those high clouds out there, and all this moisture upstairs in the atmosphere is streaming in here from the Pacific Ocean. That's going to be sticking around for the next couple of days, and as a matter of fact, it will kind of thicken up a little bit. In other words, the humidity down here at the surface is going to start to go up as we go in toward the latter part of the weekend. So today, just uh, some of those high clouds, you know, again, plenty of sunshine, more uh, high clouds around tomorrow. Uh, still, it's going to be a nice looking day. And then on Sunday, like I said, that moisture does tend to uh, thicken up. And we may actually see a couple of uh, maybe a little bit of a sprinkle or two early Sunday morning. And I don't really think the chance of rain is going to come into the picture until probably Monday. Some again, some computer models have a, a slight chance for a late, late shower on Sunday. But I think the better chance, which is not great, is going to be on Monday. Here's what's going on with the upper level steering winds. Again, we've got the southwesterly flow. There's all the moisture getting pulled in here upstairs in the atmosphere, and that's the case through the weekend. And then Monday, here's this little bit of a glitch that moves on through, and that may squeeze out some of those showers. Again, it's not going to be a big chance, great chance for rain. Then we go into the middle part of the week, and we definitely will start to warm up a little bit and keep a lot of those high clouds around. So even though we're going to be up close to 80, it's not going to be just you know blisteringly hot, anything like that. We'll have a little more humidity to deal with with, but uh, overall pretty good looking week for uh, the upcoming week for spring break. 65 degrees today at noon with winds out of the northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. A lot of sunshine again, with a lot of high clouds and then a high temperature today. Actually with a there's a weak front moving on through and that's just going to sort of hold temperatures in check. We made it to 75 yesterday, 70 today. Again, a lot of high clouds, but a good looking day. Good looking day tomorrow. Plenty of high cloudiness out there. Clouds definitely going to be thickening up going into Sunday. And temperatures will be still close to normal readings. Then we start the warm up. Chance of rain Monday, 78 Tuesday, 80 both Wednesday and Thursday. And a lot of those high clouds. Notice the low temperatures stay then in the low 60s. Overall, pretty good looking spring break. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Thanks. Time now is 551, 650 degrees outside. And coming up next, we'll introduce you to a 97 year old deputy who's being honored as the oldest law enforcement officer, not just in Texas, but in the world. And your lottery numbers as we had to break. Pick three, two, one, six with a fireball of three. Daily four, four, one, nine, five with a fireball of zero. Cash five is six, seven, 13, 29, 32. And Texas two step, 23, 28, 32, 33. Powerball is three. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, some major new updates on the coronavirus outbreak. Cases in the U.S. now topping 200 as that cruise ship hangs in limbo off the coast of San Francisco. Thousands of passengers have been told to stay in their rooms as they wait the results of the tests. We're going to speak with someone on board. And then Dr. Ashton is back with her medical team. We'll answer all your questions coming up right here on GMA. It is Friday. You know what that means. The Spurs are back in action tonight. They're coming up that big win against the Hornets Tuesday, led by acting head coach Jim Duncan. Tonight, the Spurs will be in New York to play the Brooklyn Nets. Coach Pop is back tonight. However, LaMarcus Aldridge and Yaka Pertle are still out with injuries, and Marco Bellinelli can miss the nice game. He's sick. Tip-off is scheduled for 6.30 in Brooklyn. You know, most people retire around 74 years old, never mind 74 years on the job. But as Ken Molestina reports from Johnson County, one police officer in near Dallas has been protecting and serving since the 1940s, and he's still doing his job at 97. Or twin shot pistols and this hat. Oh, that's that's that same hat. That same hat. Wow. He gave it to in 1953. When Bill Harden was gifted this hat in the early 1950s, he'd already been a police officer for about seven years in Fort Worth. First police academy lasted two weeks. After retiring from Fort Worth PD, he went on to have another full career with the Tarrant County Sheriff's Office. When he retired from there, he went down to Johnson County, where the Sheriff's Office brought him on as a deputy, a job he still holds today. It's here in this community at the Chisholm Trail Museum in Cleburne that a new exhibit is being unveiled, honoring the man they call the oldest working law enforcement officer in the world. I feel good for an old guy. 
which is why he says he still keeps putting on the uniform, the badge, and gun. So I'm going to keep going till the sheriff runs me off. <laughs> and uh, if I can make it to 75, I may go ahead and retire. We want him to know that he is important to us and he's important to the community. Johnson County Sheriff Adam King says Hardin's legacy is one of respect and love of those he serves. Being a people person, uh, just taking the time to talk to people, visit with them, and put our best foot forward. I, like I say, I'm humble and I appreciate it, you know. Amazing life and amazing career right there. Hey, online security is a growing issue and many people are expressing concern over being hacked. In our next hour of Good Morning San Antonio, we dispel some of those common myths about what hackers can and cannot do. And as we go to break, here's a live look at the Alamo. The fall of the Alamo reenactment, reenactment ceremony is coming up in just a few minutes. Sarah Costa is there live to preview that. Happened back in 1836. And traffic had a few accidents on a Friday. Officer Solis will get you up to date on what the situation looks like on the roads right now. Mike goes to Hage with the forecast and more news coming up in the next hour of the morning San Antonio. Right now, the remembrance ceremony for the final battle at the Alamo is just getting started. Our Sarah Costa is out there right now. Tell us more about the events in just a few minutes. The Rosalinda Olalde trial continues today after the jury failed to decide on a punishment in her drunk driving sentencing. We'll tell you what to look forward to today. And a live look outside with live cam. It's a very nice start to your Friday morning. A little bit cool out there, but Mike says we're in for a beautiful day. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. It is Friday, March 6th. Yay. Welcome to your Friday, everybody. Made it. And for a lot of people, it's the beginning of a vacation because spring break for a lot of kiddos starts Monday morning. Looks like it's going to be pretty nice. Well, actually, the week into next week, right? Not to correct you, doesn't it start when school lets out today? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, it does. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> well, for a lot of so kids, does that it's, bell probably, ring. it's probably started this morning. They're no, just going to go to school yeah. and kind of go through the mode, mode anyway. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be one of those days. But <laughs> Andy, just kind of clock watching. But uh, yeah, overall, pretty nice weather for spring break. We've got a small chance for a shower Monday. I really don't think it's put a, going to put a damper on uh, many uh, activities if you're sticking around here in the uh, south central portion of the state. Uh, a lot of clear skies right now. For some reason, we've gone up four degrees in the past hour at uh, 54 44 Balverde, mid 40s in portions of the hill country. Molds on the high side, oak and uh, ash are low. Of course, the updated reading is going to be coming out in about an hour or so. And uh, temperatures throughout the day, I thought we were going to be dropping down into roughly the, the mid 40s um, by the time the, the sun came up. Like I said, for some reason, I don't know if a jet turned and Gave a blast of jet blast to the thermometer out there at the airport or not. But anyway, we will be up to 65 today at noon and then a high temperature today up to 70, which is pretty much a normal high. A lot of high clouds out there, kind of like yesterday. But overall, I think a nice looking day. We will keep a lot of these high clouds around for the next couple of days. And then, like I said, that chance for a couple of showers moves in here by Monday. And we're still going to be heating up toward the middle part of the week. Details on that coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic. Here's Officer Nick Solis. And I know earlier you had that one accident. Is that still going on? That was it. That's pretty much what kept me busy the first hour and a half. Now everything's clear, so we're looking good. We're off to a good start on Friday, Mike. Uh, so, yeah, if you're heading out right now, you have a smooth commute. We had that one accident. It's been cleared now. Nothing else is going on. I'm um, believe me, I'm looking at trans guy, you know, trying to get you on accident, but nope. There's no accidents going on right now. Things are clear. This one's now gone. So let's take a look at the drive time. So we got eastbound 151 to 1604 to Highway 90, nine minutes. And if you're on 90 eastbound to 1604 to I-35, 11 minutes. So really good times there. All right, Trans Guide now. 10 at 1604. That's starting to look good. Traffic's starting to pick up just a little. Uh, 1604 at Calabra, that 151 flyover always gets backed up around 620 to 640. Remember that 410 at Fredericksburg. Traffic's going from light to moderate and uh, 410 at Broadway. Looks like east and westbound lanes are still flowing smooth. All right. Well, I hope you're having a great Friday morning. Uh, Dave, Leslie, back to you. Thank you, sir. Today marks the anniversary of the final day of the Battle of the Alamo in 1836. The San Antonio Living History Association puts on a ceremony to remember those who fought to defend the Alamo. Sarah Coaster live at the Alamo where that ceremony is just about to get started. Sarah? 
Good morning, David and Leslie, and that ceremony is about to get underway. Today marks 184 years ago that the end of the battle of the 13-day battle of the Alamo ended. And I just want to show you guys what's happening here. We have a youth choir that is about to start performing any minute now. And this is put on by the San Antonio Living History Association. And what they do is it describes the events leading up to the morning hour of the Alamo battle. Now, this ceremony will honor and remember both armies who made their sacrifice 100 in 84 years ago today. It's supposed to be a somber ceremony describing those events leading up to that morning hour of the Alamo battle. You know, large crowds are expected to be here. It's already very, very crowded um, as people are gathering in front of the Alamo this morning. Again, this is the dawn at the Alamo, and just stay with us here on GMSA and also on KSAT.com. We'll be live streaming that event, and again, that event's going to get underway in just a couple of minutes. Back to you guys. All right, Sarah, thank you very much. New this morning, San Antonio investigators are one step closer in solving a 20-year-old murder case. Police say 41-year-old Francisco Ronhell now under arrest and charged with the murder that happened back in 1996. Records show that Ron Held is accused of stabbing Joseph Johnson to death on West Mistletoe Avenue. During the investigation, investigators realized there were possible witnesses and suspects who had not yet been interviewed. Katrina Weber will have much more on this story in our next half hour. The jury in the Rosalinda Olalde punishment case will resume deliberations this morning after failing to reach a decision last night. The jury was out for more than four hours until the judge sent them home after nine last night. During closing arguments, prosecutors asked the jury to sentence her to the high end of the punishment range. The maximum is 20 years in prison. However, her lawyers asked for nine years probation. Olalde was convicted two days ago of intoxication manslaughter and intoxication assault. Driving drunk with a blood alcohol content of .18, she crashed broadside into a car, killing the driver and critically injuring four passengers. There are now more than 200 cases of the coronavirus in the United States. At least 14 people have died, including a California man forcing a cruise ship to circle off the coast of California, stranding thousands. CNN's Nadia Romero is in San Francisco, where passengers are awaiting word on what they might be, when they might be allowed to head home. Well, the first set of test samples from guests and crew, uh, previously contacted for testing, has been completed. More than 3,500 people are in limbo on the Grand Princess cruise ship just off the coast of San Francisco as they await the results from coronavirus tests. The ship was on a 15-day cruise to Hawaii when it headed back to port early after a former passenger from California died. A family member advised us that the patient had recently been on a cruise where two other passengers were suspected of having COVID-19. Thursday, a Coast Guard helicopter dropped coronavirus test kits. The first set of results are expected today. Meanwhile, the number of infections in the U.S. continues to rise, and health officials are scrambling to meet demand for test kits. They believe by the end of the week, they will have sent out enough tests to test one million specimens, which would be the equivalent of being able to test about 400,000 people from that. That's well below the goal set by the White House to have enough kits to test one million people in the same time frame. The head of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases says even that original number is not nearly enough. We're going to need millions and millions and millions of tests. In San Francisco, I'm Nadia Romero reporting. In your morning headlines, President Trump's scheduled trip to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has been canceled, according to the White House schedule. The trip to the CDC's headquarters was set to take place this afternoon, and the president was expected to sign the $8 billion package while in Atlanta. The White House has not said why the president canceled the trip. Federal prosecutors say the former United Auto Workers president has been indicted in a corruption scandal. They say Gary Jones helped funnel more than $1 million from the union he was supposed to lead. He is charged with embezzlement, tax evasion, and racketeering. Prosecutors say from 2010 to September of 2019, Jones and other UAW officials spent tens of thousands of dollars on lavish trips, restaurants, spa services, clothes, expensive cigars, and much more. The corruption investigation is still ongoing, and Jones has now been expelled from the union. 
Another contender for the 2020 Democratic presidential nomination has dropped out of the race. After failing to win any of the contests so far, Elizabeth Warren is leaving Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden to fight for the nomination. CNN's Emily Schmidt has a look at the impact her campaign had on the race and what this means going forward. Elizabeth Warren had made it into the final three candidates in the Democratic presidential primary race. She was really the only woman left standing and had built a reputation as a dedicated fighter. But after she lost even her home state on Tuesday, it was clear the math was no longer working in her favor. Now the question is, what will she do next? Elizabeth Warren is out of the race. The Massachusetts senator began her run for president with a clear goal. Our fight is for big structural change. And a lot of plans. I have a plan. That's my plan. I got a plan for that. She led the pack early in the campaign, spurred by strong debate performances. But as the race wore on, she just couldn't find her place in the wide field of candidates. I was told when I first got into this, there are two lanes. And I thought it was possible that that wasn't the case, that there was more room and more room to run another kind of campaign. But evidently that wasn't the case. Now it's down to Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders for the nomination. But as other former candidates have been quick to choose between the two, Warren is holding off on any endorsement. I need some space around this and I and want to take a little time to think a little more. Despite her failure to notch any wins, Warren says she feels she made a difference within the Democratic Party. We have ideas now that we talk about that we just weren't talking about even a year ago. And a difference in the lives of young girls around the country. One of the hardest parts of this is all those picky promises and all those little girls we're going to have to wait four more years. Those closely watching this Democratic race may note that there is still a woman in the race. Hawaii Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard remains in the race. She's still doing some campaigning. But to put it all into perspective, she has earned approximately one delegate so far in this primary process. Combined, Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden have earned more than 950 delegates. In Washington, I'm Emily Schmidt. It is now 610 and 54 degrees. Apparently one fold just wasn't enough. We're going to see which company is making a flip phone that folds twice. And it's almost time for spring break. But even if you don't know any students, some traffic around town could affect your commutes. We'll tell you what to look out for coming up after the break. And live cam giving us a look outside. Make plans this weekend, everybody. Go outside because it's going to be pretty today and tomorrow. Welcome back. It's now 614. Trending right now on KSAT.com. The breakfast war continues with Dunkin' Donuts getting into the game. The chain is counteracting savory breakfast items from McDonald's and Wendy's with something sweet. Every Friday in March, starting today, you can get a free classic donut. But, of course, there's a catch. You need to order a drink with it. And you have to order it through the Dunkin' Donuts app as well. And speaking of donuts, Krispy Kreme making a donut meant for San Antonians' heart and maybe their arteries. Oh. The company will be back in the big red donut for barbecue. The company is bringing back, and we don't want to mess this one up. The company is bringing back the big red donut, the barbacoa and big red festival this year. You get all that? Yeah. Okay. They're bringing back the big red donut for the big red barbacoa festival this year. Exactly. The treat has a big <laughs> red filling and is lined with a red glaze. The barbacoa and big red festival takes place May 16th and 17th, so you can have your really cool kind of donut, I guess. When the school bell rings at the end of the day today, many students, as we mentioned, will be on spring break. And because of that, the San Antonio Zoo is preparing for more traffic. To let a drive from Alamo Stadium to North St. Mary's, St. Mary's from the zoo entrance to Mulberry Avenue, and Stadium Drive from Mulberry Avenue to Divine Road will be only one way. The new traffic flow will last from 8 in the morning until 4 in the afternoon until March 15th. You can find all of our trending stories right now on KSAT.com. They have a new parking garage over there. Is there a new mm -hmm. one? Yeah, for the zoo, right? Yeah. Maybe that'll help. The right. boy it does get backed up on it 281. It sure does. Man. Speaking of traffic, 
Let's see how the roadways are looking on your Friday. Yeah, they are looking great right now. Off to a great start here this Friday morning. Now, we only had that one major accident um, earlier in the day, early in the morning, but now uh, everything seems to be cleared up. Maybe because people got an early start on spring break. Things are looking really good on the roadways right now. So let's take a look at that, shall we? 37 in Jones on the south east side looking really good. 281 in Loop 410, that's my favorite shot right there, is looking great. Uh, 281 at Grayson. The traffic flowing, just flowing there on that on that highway. And uh, 35 at Ben's Engelman. Look at that. Not too much. 35 and 410 and 10 at the Y. Looking good. Pretty good for a Friday. Mm -hmm. right nice day to go to the zoo today. It, it or tomorrow. Because, you know, even though we'll still have temperatures in the 70s, you get a lot of sun. You know, it can be kind of kind of warm after a while. Mm -hmm. But um, we're gonna have that veiled sunshine. Although, if you are out. Do not forget the sunscreen. Yes. That's very Body good advice. Days, you can get the worst sunburn. Especially you if you're bald. Because you don't. Especially yes. if you're bald. Don't forget the head. Bald, if you're bald. And we get in the winter. <laughs> what he said. Anyway, <laughs> um, here's an interesting shot. We usually get them from the ground, but not up above. And there is somebody in an airplane flying over Catula. I like how they call them the crop circles there. That's great. Looking at that patchwork of agriculture out there. Great shot. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. And here we are starting to see a little bit of the sun, the glow of the sunrise. And there's all those high clouds that we have around here, which is kind of like a, it's not a real thick blanket. Uh, it's more like having a sheet on top of you with those high, thin clouds out there. Um, it's done a little bit maybe to hold temperatures. We did actually go up a few degrees in the past hour here at the airport. Uh, 44 Bandera, 52 Tarpley, 51 at Stinson, and fairly dry air out there. Not much of a breeze, and uh, we're... This is what you would expect this time of year. This is the 30 year average temperature, upper 40s, and the average high temperature is right around upper 60s, close to 70, and that's where we're going to be today as well. So here's the water vapor imagery, and this is mid upper levels of the atmosphere, and this is why we have some of those high clouds, which are actually showing up on the satellite picture as well. No, nothing showing up on radar. Now, all this moisture upstairs in the atmosphere, so we've got it fairly dry down here at the surface, but the moisture aloft, and that's coming in from the uh, Pacific Ocean, and that's going to remain throughout the rest of the weekend. So we will keep a lot of these high clouds around, which is you know kind of nice, a little veiled sunshine. Not too bad if you are outside, but like we said, emphasize lots and lots of sunscreen on a day like this. So here's the uh, computer model, and we keep the high clouds around today. Like I said, very nice day, really pleasant. Humidity is going to be okay today as well as tomorrow. We'll still keep a lot of high clouds around uh, throughout the day tomorrow. And then we go into Sunday. Still a lot of these high clouds, but they are going to be thickening up. We'll have a lot more moisture around here down here at the surface. And so that's going to help out with maybe a couple of sprinkles in the morning on Sunday and then late Sunday night. There's a small chance for a few showers, but it's more likely on uh, on Monday. So we keep this southwesterly flow, all the moisture, the high clouds around through the day tomorrow and into Sunday and Monday. And then Monday, here's that little glitch right there. That's going to Squeeze out a couple of showers. I don't think rain chances are that great. 30% to put a number on it for Monday. And then as we go into uh, Tuesday in the middle part of the week, we will continue to keep this flow coming in here out of the uh, Pacific Ocean. And that's going to also help to warm things up. So that's why we're going to be pushing 80 degrees by Wednesday and Thursday of next week. But a lot of those high clouds. So it's going to be actually a very comfortable week, it looks like, next week. 65 degrees today at noon. I'm going to call it mostly sunny skies, a lot of high clouds out there, and uh, same thing throughout the rest of the day, and then a high temperature up to 70. Northeasterly wind at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tomorrow we start off uh, mid-upper 40s again, close to normal. Stay right around the upper 60s in the afternoon. We'll make it right around 71 on Sunday. Of course, another reminder, set your clocks ahead one hour before you go to bed Saturday night. And otherwise, you'll be late for church. And then a lot of high clouds throughout the week next week and getting up to 80 Wednesday, Thursday. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Thank you much. 620, 54 degrees. Many companies are telling employees to work from home, but it's just not possible for some of us. After the break, we're going to see how you can protect yourself on your commute and your GMA first look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KSA.com <clears throat> for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K.
third stair always creaked, and your mother told me all her life that I should fix it. Now, it reminds me of her. I'm just glad I never fixed it. Listen, you don't need to go anywhere, Dad. Meet Christine. She's going to help you around the house. The best home to be in is your own. From personal care and memory care to help around the house, Home Instead offers personalized in-home services for your loved ones. Home Instead Senior Care. To us, it's personal. Get sick too. Protection. Lysol laundry sanitizer kills 99.9% .9 of illness causing bacteria. Detergent leaves behind. Lysol. What it takes to protect. With Advil liquid gels, you have fast acting power over pain. So the whole world looks different. The unbeatable strength and speed of Advil liquid gels. What pain? In this morning's GMA First Look, protecting yourself on a plane. If you use wipes, make sure to read the label to see how long it takes to kill bacteria. That can range from 30 seconds to a few minutes. So we've got our wipes. This is the most important thing, getting this tray table. In one study sponsored by the FAA, researchers found that the bottom of the tray table had less bacteria than the top, but armrests had even more germs than tray tables. And don't forget that air vent. But if you're healthy, experts say don't even open it. Air on a plane is refreshed every few minutes. That's more often than the air in an average office building. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have full live coverage from coast to coast on the coronavirus. Plus, Dr. Jen Ashton answers your questions live. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. There are companies actually putting off face-to-face -face interviews because of the coronavirus. The social media site LinkedIn is the latest. Job candidates are being given the option to interview virtually. Google and other big tech firms are also changing interview procedures to reduce the possibility of spreading the virus. A lot of companies have been doing that anyway, even before the coronavirus. Well, one company is talking or taking foldable phones one step further. China's TCL has unveiled a concept device that folds twice to create three separate panels. The double fold technology will allow users to fit a 10 inch screen into their pockets. If your folding phone works or doesn't, or you don't have a folding phone, put it down anyway. Oh, yeah. Because it's time to put the phone down. Phone day. It's unplug day. Yeah, it's unplug <laughs> day. The National Day of Unplugging begins today at sundown and lasts until tomorrow. The idea is to unplug phones, tablets, and laptops for the full 24 hours instead. Use that time to make connections with family and friends. So how do you connect with family and friends out of town if you don't have your phone? I don't think you're supposed to connect with those out of town. You're supposed to connect with those that are right around you. What if all your family and friends live out of town? You don't have any friends in town. In town. Is that your case? <laughs> is that your case? <laughs> your mic is is Dina out of town? You got bigger problems than you. Well, maybe. No. It's 626 and 54 degrees. I'm just asking the question. I get the soapbox out, everybody. <laughs> Staying safe online is getting a lot tougher. Many of us are worried about getting more in, in, and some of our information rather hacked. In our next half hour, we're going to see what a hacker can and cannot do. And start saving your money now. You couldn't be taking a trip to space. Do cell phones work in space? Probably well, not. More about SpaceX's new program to send people to the International Space Station. And let's take a listen in on the dawn at the Alamo ceremony. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. San Antonio police say they have their suspects. I'll tell you all about it. There are now 162 confirmed cases of coronavirus across 18 states. I'm Inez de la Quintero, and I'll have all the details coming up. Live look outside with live cam. Gonna be a nice weekend. You know, today is basically the start of spring break for most kids. And those folks gotta go to the bus stop and sit there and wait and thinking, man, 
I know. Isn't it something over. how <laughs> when you're this close to a vacation, it seems like time yeah. just drags and drags and drags. But it's and then okay. you got that one teacher that throws the pop quiz at you. You go, oh. <laughs> I didn't bring my brain today. Don't do that to me. All right, teachers, be nice to the kiddos today. But the teachers are just as excited because they're off as well. Uh, well, I'm hoping that people took today off so it's more lighter on traffic for everyone going to work, <laughs> right? Maybe next so. week it will be at least. Yeah, hopefully. Yes, exactly. Right now, it is clear. It is clear. It can be. No, there's no accidents right Good. now. Good. We love awesome. to hear that. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Clear skies, too. Well, I mean, we've got some high clouds out there, kind of like what we had around uh, yesterday, but still, it's going to be uh, some how beautiful, beautiful. weather. Yeah, look at that picture. That is absolutely gorgeous out there, and temperatures are in the uh, 50s as of right now here in town. 54 degrees. We actually went up in the past uh, hour for some reason. 46 in Bernie, 43 Comfort, and uh, 52 right now in Divine. Mold is on the high side. Oak is low. Ash is on the low side as well. And we're going to have, I'm going to call it mostly sunny skies. A lot of those high clouds, kind of like what we had yesterday, and really pleasant temperatures. I mean, we started off this morning about 50 upper 40s, which is a normal low temperature, the 30-year average, and uh, ending up at 70. That's about where it should be as well this afternoon. We're going to have very pleasant temperatures over the weekend. A lot of these high clouds, they will begin to thicken up as the weekend rolls on. And uh, maybe by the start of next week, a couple of showers. But as far as spring break is concerned, I really wouldn't worry about it too much. I don't think it's going to put a damper on uh, any activities. And we start to uh, warm up by the middle part of next week. We're going to get it all sorted out and all the details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. And uh, Nick, as you said, nothing really going on out there, right? Yeah, I'm just going to stick to the Guide, Mike, because okay. there's nothing out there right now. I, we're off to a good start. Maybe it's because spring break. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm thinking people took today off because right now the traffic is flowing very, very smoothly. So here we go. Let's take a look at some trans guide. 35 at Brooklyn looking great. Nice little sunrise there. 35 at Cesar Chavez good. 35 in Benz Engelman. We got a stalled vehicle right there on the right shoulder. 35 and 37. There's hardly any traffic right now. So I mean, enjoy your morning commute, everyone. Uh, don't rush on the way to work. You're going to have plenty of time today. 10 and 6 and 04 are looking great. Well, I hope you have a great Friday and a great start to your spring break. Dave, Leslie, back to you. Thanks, Nick. New this morning, it took nearly a quarter century, but San Antonio police believe they have solved a murder. They made an arrest in connection with a stabbing death. Katrina Weber is live near downtown with details. And Katrina, you mentioned that police were able to talk to witnesses recently. Any idea what made them speak up now? Well, maybe just that they were never questioned before. Investigators who were looking through those old case files recently realized that there were several people who had been overlooked. But one of those who ultimately pointed the finger at 41-year-old Francisco Rangel told police he was very young and afraid at that time. Rangel is accused of stabbing 18-year-old Joseph Johnson to death back in April of 1996. Police found Johnson's body in an abandoned house in the 700 block of West Mistletoe. The arrest affidavit says there were two witnesses who recently identified Ron Hull as the suspect. Now, one of those people lives in Florida now, and police had to travel there to talk to him. They did track down Ron Hull here and took him to jail yesterday. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Right now, large crowds gathering in front of the Alamo for the 31st dawn of the Alamo ceremony, commemorating the final battle of the Alamo 184 years ago. The descendants of those who actually fought are laying the wreaths. Let's listen in on the ceremony. And some of the wreaths that even have pictures yeah. of some of those who did fight. So once again, you're, you're looking at uh, descendants of the fighters at the Battle of the Alamo laying wreaths there in that uh, ceremony this morning. 1836 is when that ha battle happened. Moving on to other news this morning, 14 people are now dead across the United States because of the coronavirus. The state of Washington is now urging about 2 million people to work from home after the most recent death. 
Meanwhile, thousands of passengers are stuck on a cruise ship off the coast of San Francisco, causing frustration and outrage at the slow pace of testing for the virus. ABC's Inez de la Catera has more. As the coronavirus continues to spread around the country, the Coast Guard dropping off testing kits to the Grand Prince's cruise ship to test passengers and crew potentially infected with the new virus. After a man died from being exposed during a cruise on the same ship last month, some passengers showing symptoms, the ship being held off the coast of San Francisco. If we've been exposed, we've been exposed and there's not much we can do about it. In New York, Mayor Bill de Blasio telling residents who have recently traveled to China, South Korea, Italy, Iran and Japan to self-quarantine. The city's Department of Health is monitoring close to 3,000 New Yorkers for home isolation. In Washington state, Seattle area district schools closing for 22,000 students in an effort to slow the outbreak. Federal investigators now asking questions at the nursing home where nearly a dozen people died from the virus. Residents' families speaking out. Somebody needs to come and take control of this site. Vice President Pence touching down in that state, giving Washington's governor an elbow bump and pledging the federal government's full support, but admitting... We don't have enough tests today uh, to meet uh, what we anticipate will be the demand going forward. President Trump defending his administration's response during a Fox News town hall and with the Dow plunging over 900 points, admitting the virus could have an impact on the economy. It certainly might have an impact. At the same time, I have to say, people are now staying in the United States, spending their money in the U.S., and I like that. Congress has now approved more than $8 billion to fight the outbreak. The president is expected to sign that bill later today. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. And stock markets around the world, including here at home, down as traders fear a world economic slowdown amid concerns of the coronavirus. Japan's index dropped 2%, while markets in Australia dropped 1.5% in the U.S., the S&P dropped more than 3% and is down more than 10% from its high less than a month ago. Mortgage rates are also falling. The average rate on a 30-year fixed rate loan is now down just under 3.3%. That's according to Freddie Mac. The rate is the lowest on record. However, experts say worries about the spread of the coronavirus may keep the home sales down despite the low rates. And HP again rejecting a takeover bid from Xerox. The latest one was valued around $35 billion. The board at HP says the bid is undervalued. And there are also questions about the combined debt that the two companies bring to the table. Well, taking a vacation on the International Space Station could be possible in the next year. SpaceX has signed a deal with startup Axiom Space to take tourists, private researchers, and other individuals to the International Space Station. Axiom has not shared the pricing yet, but previous tourism missions to the station have cost tens of millions of dollars. Ah, uh, here we go. Good evening, pull off two in a row. Spurs back in action tonight with some energy after that win in the final seconds on Tuesday in Charlotte. The Spurs will be in New York to play the Brooklyn Nets tonight. Coach Pop is back to coach after missing a game for personal business. However, LaMarcus Aldridge and Jakob Pertl are still out with injuries. Marco Bellinelli could miss tonight's game because he is sick. Tip-off for tonight's game is scheduled for 6.30. It's like a rule. When you yeah. say Bellinelli, you have to say Bellinelli. Is that what you were doing? Bellinelli. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't say it right. Marco Bellinelli. I'm going to do that. Bellinelli. Nicely done, David. Thank you. Six, I forgot. 639, 54 degrees. Online security is a growing issue, and many people are expressing concern about being hacked. After the break, we're going to dispel common myths about what hackers can and cannot do. Welcome back. It is 643. More and more people are concerned about online security. In fact, statistics show a hacker attacks every 39 seconds an average of 2,244 times a day. But there are a lot of misconceptions people have about what hackers can and cannot do. Our Max Massey clears up the confusion. Hackers are predators that can steal, damage, or destroy your most personal information. And there are a lot of myths about these cyber thieves. The first, an antivirus program will protect you from hackers. It doesn't matter what antivirus you're using. Uh, if, you, if it's a new virus, chances are you're going to be infected by it. Still, experts recommend installing just one antivirus as a safeguard. But your best protection is avoiding clicking on suspicious links or opening unfamiliar attachments. 
Another myth, hackers can intercept emails. They're actually capable of accessing your email account and reading your messages sent out to third parties. That's why it's important to use more complex passwords with symbols in both upper and lowercase letters. Another fallacy, Apple products are too secure to be hacked. Apple products absolutely can get infected and Macs can get some of the absolute worst virus viruses you've ever seen. And although it's much less common, your phone can get hacked as well. Another myth, hackers only target big companies. Businesses of any size are at risk for security breaches and anyone with a computer can be a target as well. The FBI also warns against smart TVs and hacking. They say that hackers can actually get into your home network and even control your cameras and your microphones. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Everybody, check this out. A North Carolina woman wanted to celebrate her 100th birthday by doing something she had never done before. She wanted to go to jail. Ruth Bryan says she's never been arrested and wanted to cross it off her bucket list. Local police obliged and sent officers to her assisted living center and put her in handcuffs. She even pretended to resist arrest by <laughs> playfully kicking at the officer. Police officers gave her hugs and a jailhouse uh, portrait when they booked her. Ruth then returned to her retirement community and celebrated with the party and a very good story. Hilarious. I love her. Great she story. is a ball of fire. I like the fact they took her off in the uh, police car with the siren going. There she goes. Yeah, she even resisted arrest a little bit. I love yeah. that. <laughs> Look, she's all proud. <laughs> Cuff me. Take me to jail. All right, well, let's check in with Officer Solis. <laughs> that is the kind of criminal I want to arrest. That's a sweet lady <laughs> right? right there. But. All right, right now we're looking good in the roadways. Things are looking very smooth all around the city. It's a very lighter Friday traffic more than usual, so things are looking good if you're heading that way. Let's take a look at some drive times. If you're on 35 southbound from the city of New Braunfels to 1604, we got 17 minutes. And if you're on uh, 35 southbound continuing loop 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes. Not bad there. Really good times. All right, let's take a look outside at the trans guy. Tenant Woodstone looking good. 35 in Brooklyn looking uh, better. It's just very light to moderate traffic this morning. Nothing too heavy. 35 in Benz Engelman. It's flowing there. And uh, 35 and 37. Look at that, man. Just, Ooh, where is everybody? Yeah, it's just uh, flowing. 10 inbounds and outbounds as well. You know, usually in, inbounds downtown gets really, yeah. really heavy this time. Some people already took off for spring break, maybe. Maybe. Not early. Yeah. It's going to be pretty nice, I think, uh, throughout most of the weekend next week. So. It's going to be busy on the coast for sure. Ah, yes, indeed. And we will have a lot of high clouds around here. Not anything too hot and really not, not too cold at all either. So. Just right. Just Thanks for right. Goldilocks. And you're going to start your spring break with a big, beautiful moon, although in some cases it's going to be kind of hidden by some of the high clouds out there. But uh, it's not quite full yet. Beautiful afternoon moon, and as the sun is going down, the moon is going to be coming up in the east. Um, the full moon's actually on Monday, and it's got a few names to it, according to lore. And actually, this one is interesting. I saw one website had about four different names. Full worm moon, meaning the worms are starting to come out as the ground thaws, and then that would attract the robins. Full crow moon, crows According to Lord, would signal the end of winter. Full crust moon when the crust of the snow is finally starting to melt. And then the full sap moon as a lot of the maple trees up in the uh, north and northeast would uh, start to have the, the sap flow. Again, full moon is coming up on Monday. Beautiful start this morning. Almost looks like a watercolor out there. Obviously a lot of mid-high clouds. 54 in town, 45 Bulverde, 43 in comfort. Temperatures were actually above normal right now. We were down around 50 in the hourly readings a couple of hours ago. And the humidity is still very low down here at the surface, but we've got that moisture which is coming up, coming in upstairs in the atmosphere. And this is all flowing in here from the uh, Pacific Ocean, and that's going to stick around for the next few days. So we're not going to have any just completely clear blue skies, but really not bad. I mean, yesterday was a nice day, even though we had a lot of high clouds out there, and that's going to be the situation again today. And overall, though, I mean, no rain the next couple of days at all. Uh, maybe by, I think, Sunday morning, there could be a little bit of mist around here as the humidity really starts to come back on in, and we will continue to keep a lot of the high clouds around, and they will definitely start to thicken up by Sunday. And then late Sunday into Monday, there's a chance for some rain. Um, I don't think the chance of rain is great on Sunday at all, and it's not that great on Monday, maybe a 30% chance for some rain. So we've got uh, the southwesterly flow, keeping the clouds around here, and a little bit of a glitch that moves through on Monday, that right there, that's gonna 
maybe squeeze out a couple of those showers. And then as that low develops out there to the west of us, it's really going to start to pull in the heat. So that's going to get us up to about 80 by Wednesday and Thursday of next week. But we'll have kind of that veiled sunshine out there. So again, I think it's going to be a really, really nice week. 65 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies and then a high temperature up to 70. And that's the average, the normal this time of year. Wind out of the northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tomorrow, 68 for a high temperature after starting off in the 40s. And Sunday, nice day as well, although a lot of clouds. Pretty, pretty well cloudy skies on Sunday, and then those few showers are possible Monday. And we get up close to 80 by Wednesday and Thursday. And so a lot of those high clouds. And of course, set your clocks ahead one hour before you go to bed Saturday night. Thank you, Mike. It is 650. It's 54 degrees. Getting into college is tough, and finding a way to pay for it can be even tougher. Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to meet a local custodian who's helping students find scholarships to fund their higher education. And as we move to break, I want to show you this beautiful shot. The Alamo as the sun rises. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, some major new updates on the coronavirus outbreak. Cases in the U.S. now topping 200 as that cruise ship hangs in limbo off the coast of San Francisco. Thousands of passengers have been told to stay in their rooms as they wait the results of the tests. We're going to speak with someone on board. And then Dr. Ashton is back with her medical team. We'll answer all your questions coming up right here on GMA. A Northside man is feeling the heat from a cold case murder. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. San Antonio police say he is their number one suspect. 41-year-old Francisco Ronjo was arrested yesterday in connection with a 1996 stabbing death. Police say witnesses identified him as the man who killed 18-year-old Joseph Johnson, then left his body in an abandoned house in the 700 block of West Mistletoe. Police say they recently took a, a look at the unsolved case and realized that they had missed talking to some people back then. They had to travel to Florida to talk to one of those witnesses. And again, two people identified Ron Hell as their suspect. He was taken into custody yesterday on a charge of murder. Reporting near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Once again, it is game day for the Spurs. They'll be in New York to play the Brooklyn Nets tonight. LaMarcus Aldridge, Jakob Pertl are out with injuries. Marco Bellinelli might miss because he's sick. Tip-off for that game is at 6.30. Looking for two in a row on this road trip. Go Spurs, go. Hopefully traffic's going just fine as well. Let's check in with Officer Nick Solis. Yeah, I'm going to show you all these trans guide uh, uh, footage right here. I mean, look, things are going smooth. 37 and Jones looking very good. That's very rare for this uh, time of day on a Friday, especially 281 and 410. Very smooth as well, looking good. Let's see what else, 281 in Grayson. Yeah, traffic is light today, folks. You're going to have a great commute to work. Sensational sunrise. We've got some of those high clouds around here, but just a picture perfect. You can keep a lot of high clouds around throughout the day. 53 right now in town. Grab a light jacket. You won't need it by this afternoon. 70 for a high temperature. I'm going to call it mostly sunny skies. Same thing over the weekend, but the clouds will definitely start to kind of thicken up a lot of those high clouds and mid-80s by the middle of next week. That's great for spring breakers, though. Mm -hmm. That's good temperature. Thank you so much for being with us this morning, everybody. I want to leave you with a shot of the Alamo on this day. Back in 1836, the final battle took place.